So let's go ahead and take a look at equipment. Equipment is by far one of the most configurable aspects of the system. It's most typically used by teams that want to track the installation uh, and commissioning handover of major MEP equipment. Now that being said, it can be used in a variety of capacities. I've had teams use it to track the installation of curtain wall panels, for example. I've had teams use it to track um, the installation of precast uh, concrete segments. So again, very versatile in its application, but again, typically it is used to track installation commissioning handover of major MEP equipment. So you can see here my equipment list on my project. You can see the components, their categorization. I can report out on the statuses of all the categories here. The statuses here to my right are completely configurable. These are ones that I set up that I use on my sample project to again track the installation and handover uh, for these components. This list can be populated in a few ways. It can be populated from Excel, pretty simply. It can also be populated directly from our building information models. So pretty powerful there. You can automate that process and, and use the components as they are in your model um, and really verify and, and capture information at the point of construction, sync that information back into our building information model. So I'm going to go ahead and search for a piece of equipment here. So I'll tap in the search text here. I actually began barcoding my equipment. So part of my workflow was barcode the equipment when it arrives on site. So I can search for it, and here it is. It goes. It went ahead and pulled up this equipment record here. So for me, this is actually a curtain panel that I'm tracking through installation. So I can see some basic information here, a profile. I can see some identifiers. These are completely configurable. Out of the box, they relate to COBE standards. So for, for owner handover, um, it's a good opportunity for us to not only have information here at our fingertips during construction, but also populate information that are relevant to the handover and, and operation of these materials and assets. So again, completely configurable here. Um, you know, one thing that I have seen is you're certainly not going to expect your, your field user from the iPad to put in the purchase order, the purchase date. But there are certain data points here that you would expect your field user to put in. For example, the install date. Whether it's put in from the iPad or from the web, you'll see that information here. The point is, as long as it's you know, all populated either from the iPad or from the web, it's, it's working on the same wavelength and it's, and it's going to be a lot easier to hand over this data to your owner. Um, again, whether the information is captured in the field at the point of construction or put into the system uh, back in the home office. So you can see from the details tab um, those specific data points here. I can click on the checklist and you can see the checklist that I've associated with this curtain panel I'm tracking the installation for. So I have these two checklists here that I have to fill out for this specific component. You can see the last time it was run I could certainly go in there and review those checklists. I can then click on issues here and I can see any particular deficiencies that were logged for this particular item. I can come into attachments. Attachments really work three ways as it relates to equipment. First, on the front end. So what do my field users need in their hands out in the field during construction? Well, for me, I gave them this installation guide, I gave them product data. Maybe we put in shop drawings. Again, point being, whatever our guys need in the field, we're going to put that in here and attach it to that item so they can get the job done. Next, during construction, what information do we expect them to capture? Well, they put some of the information here in the details tab, others they put here in attachments, such as this photo they marked up. Then finally, number three, on the back end, what information do we want to put in here that relates to owner handover and operations? Well, you can see here I actually have a folder here with some O&M manuals relevant to this one item. So we can keep going around to the signatures tab here. So again, a custom signature field that I added for functional pre-functional approval. Again, sample data for my sample project here. I can click into activity and I can see any comments that were authored that relate to this one piece of equipment. And finally, because I've associated this record with the component in my building information model, I can hit this button in the top right and take a look. It's going to take me right to this component here in my building information model. 
Once we're in here, we have a lot of interactions we can do. So I can first, I can click on it. I can hit this information button here. That's gonna bring up any information that I have in my building information model. Pretty powerful here. So now we're, we're at a time where our, our BIM managers and those um, authoring members of our team in terms of our, our authoring, authoring our model are sitting down at the table with our field staff and, and really deciding, well, what information do you need in the field? You know, for each of these elements, each of these components, what's going to help you get the job done? Because we can now come in and, and we can put those items here into our model and view it out in the field on the iPad. So I can click on it again. I can also um, isolate it. So you can see how this window interacts with surrounding components. Pretty cool. I can also um, do a few basic measurements. So pretty powerful there. So say I wanted to come in here and take a measurement, you know, say between the window and, and this duct right here. I can hit the measurement button, hit object to object, tap on the window, tap on the piece of steel, and there we go. So pretty powerful. You know, at the end of the day, what you're looking at here in the model is the design intent. So this is what was supposed to be built. You know, what is this actual dimension? Is it more? Is it less? You know, this might call for a change order. So we can clearly see what the design intent was. Maybe it's not being executed on. Um, again, good information to have at your fingertips in the field at the point of construction. So a lot of other tools we have here, you have the ability to add issues in the model. You have the ability to uh, go to save viewpoints. So rather than um, learn how to exactly navigate the model, you actually can come into these save views. Um, and it's a really great way to navigate around the model really simply, really easily, efficiently out in the field. So I can hit done here, go back to our equipment list. And there we go. The last item we're going to take a look at is going to be tasks.